In Inmate Act, the Sun Rosa County Sheriff's Office. This call will be recorded and monitored. Your advance pay account balances $34.70. For customer assistance, billing inquiries, or to block future calls, dial 1-877-650-4249. To hear the calls for... This call is subject to monitoring and recording. Do not use three-way or call waiting features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Uh, yeah, brother, one more last question. Uh, with, with certain types of people, dictator types like Hitler, for example, or Stalin, you cannot compromise at all. Not one inch. You don't move at all. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote a fabulous book. Eric Tactus wrote a great book about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Uh, in 2010, the book was a huge book titled uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Master Preacher, Prophet, Spy, or something like that. Anyway, excellent book. He showed clearly that the, the reason Hitler was able to come to power is precisely because so many Christians compromised and bowed the knee and said, well, he's, you know, he's the leader, we have to do what he says. Had the, had the Christians stood up and done what was right, Hitler never could have done what he did. It's the same with every dictator throughout history. I don't know all the details of what exactly is happening in our American system and in our government, but somebody somewhere along the line did not stand up and say, no, you don't do that, you're not authorized, you can't do that, this isn't right. Now often the ones who stand up against the dictators get hammered down, killed, thrown in prison. I'm fully aware of that. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs, okay? I don't consider myself a martyr and don't want to be one. But uh, I do think everything I've done in this, uh, I've tried to seek God's face, and I've done what I consider to be the right, the godly thing to do. If they want to compromise and they think that'll help, they can tell them they can run their life however they want. We had the same issue with America in 1776. There were the Tories who said, who were Americans, that said, look, we have to support the British. That's, that's the king. I mean, God ordained the king, blah, blah, blah. And only about 3% of the American population supported George Washington and the, and the boys at Valley Forge. Now, today, we're glad they, where they won, and we're proud of them, and put their pictures on our dollar bills and have you know, celebrate their birthdays. But back then, I think most Americans today would not have supported the revolution. Uh, it, it, things haven't changed. Okay, I'm not involved in any revolution, but I was attacked, and I'm simply standing up for what's right. One of my heroes in the Bible is Shama. In uh, one of David's mighty men, in 2 Samuel 23, it says, Shammah stood up against the Philistines. Everybody else had fled. <clears throat> Everybody left the battlefield. He stood there and defended the pea patch against the whole army. He said, look, I'm not moving. You're not getting this pea patch. Why would you risk your life for a bunch of vegetables? I don't know, but he did. And I feel that way about that property at, in Pensacola. I think it was not properly obtained by the government. I think this issue needs to be fought. I have no guarantee I'm going to win. I've already spent eight and a half years in jail over this. <clears throat> and they probably want to put me in again. Oh, I, don't, I can't help what they do. But I know I'm going to try to stand up and do what's right based on what I think God wants. <clears throat> and I think if I win, I will have won a victory for many other Christians and churches and people. And if I lose, I'll just go down in history as somebody who fought a battle that couldn't be won. There have been plenty of those down through the centuries. Anyway, so that's just my quick thoughts on that topic. Okay, thank you, right. No, thank you, Pastor Ovin, and uh, we appreciate we appreciate you. And uh, I just uh, your 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 uh, comments about not compromising is uh, I just think an inspiration to many many people. And praise God, uh, praise God for you and uh, the the example that you're setting and always uh, giving the glory to Jesus Christ. All right, Pastor Hovind, um I guess. Um, I, I, before we go on, I did want to let you know that I do have an account set up, a video account for yourself as well as Paul Hansen. Uh, and so uh, I don't have any money on it, but if you see it go online, it means that I've got a significant update. And if you want to call, uh, you know, if you do see me online, um, and as well, if you ever want to make a video update, I can do it as well as Derek can do it. I did speak to Derek, and he's going to be sending me the video that you made earlier with him. He's going to be sending me the video that you made earlier with him, and praise God for Derek. Um, also, I've got a, a video account for Sean Stuller. Uh, I haven't added any money to it, but it says uh, it says it's not activated. I don't know why that is the case. I've got to call the jail and ask them. And um, 
So just to let you know that, and we do have Bible questions, and if you care, um, I'll jump into those right now. Okay, sounds great. Okay, very good. All right, Pastor Hovind, this next question comes in from Tara from Western Australia, and she writes, uh, Dear Dr. Hovind, thank you for your answer to my previous question. You said, taking away from the evolutionist uh, the, the length of time is like pulling a pacifier from the baby's mouth. And you mentioned the Australians call it a passy. A little bit of Australian trivia for you. Actually, over here we refer to it as a we refer to a baby's pacifier as a dummy. But it's okay. I still knew what you meant. Uh, anyway, I have a question about Proverbs. <laughs> so we learn all kinds of new things. A, a, a dummy. I, I had no idea it was called a dummy. Um, Anyway, I have a question about Proverbs 26, verse 4, which says, and this verse comes up a lot, actually. Uh, anybody involved in your situation is always bringing up this verse. I, I can say I've heard it from multiple people at various stages of, this, uh, of your tribulation. But uh, Proverbs 26, verse 4 says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be likened to him. But the next verse says, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Is this a contradiction, or might it just be two different approaches to handling the beha behavior of fools, depending on the nature of their folly? Thank you for your response. Hope you get out soon. Tara from Western Australia. Well, thank you, Tara. Appreciate the information on the dummy and the, uh, 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 <laughs> and the question. I think it's quite obvious, since these verses are right next to each other, that it's not a contradiction. I mean, any author would catch the contradiction, like, hello, they're in this next sentence. It's obviously what's called the Hebrew parallelism, or um, they have another word for it, I forget what it is, but they often say opposite things, like, he was big, he wasn't small. Okay? Uh, that's a common way of teaching a, a main truths. Or he showed the opposite with it. I think that those best, those two verses gives the gives the reader the option. Uh, do you want to answer this guy or not? Last night we had some guys sitting at the table out here arguing about was was Adam a hermaphrodite, both male and female, and they drew me into the argument just for a few seconds, and I listened. And they were showing some Bible verses, and one guy was yelling, he goes to some screwball kind of cult that believes uh, that Adam was both male and female. I just calmly tore off a little piece of paper and wrote on there Proverbs 14, 7, handed it to one of the men, and I walked off. <clears throat> About a half hour later, he came into my room laughing. He said, man, that was the perfect response. <laughs> Proverbs 14, 7 says, go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the words of knowledge. Just, it's time to walk away. This guy's a moron. And that's what you have to do sometimes. Just just walk away. Don't even answer. So, you, uh, you're allowed to, uh, in my book I wrote uh, uh, called Whose Mouths Must Be Stopped, where I did the debate with P.C. Myers, the so-called atheist from uh, Minnesota. Uh, that's up, uh, I think it's on Ludo. Is that up there on Ludo? Whose Mouths Must Be Stopped? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And all the proceeds from those books are currently going to Randall. Oh, okay. Yeah, it probably should go to Ernie. Work that out. Where, uh, no, Randall needs to get paid for his work, and then they go to Ernie. Anyway, I'll work that out with him. Okay. So, uh, in, that, in, that, uh, in that email debate, I believe, I mentioned at the beginning that Proverbs 26, 4, and 5 gives me the option to choose. Do I want to answer or not answer? And this time, I choose to answer. But there's no question, anybody who believes they come from a rock is a fool, an absolute fool. Anybody who believes this evolution theory, other than the microevolution, is a fool. They, they, they just are. Grasshoppers are not related to bananas and not related to elephants. They're just not. You can believe that if you want, but you're a fool to believe such a thing. So I, I take it as my choice. Most of the time, I do not answer the fool unless I see it can help other people. I don't get involved in email debates online with atheists because nobody else is listening. I'll debate them in front of a university where 1,000 or 2,000 people will come because then it helps other people. I know I'm probably not going to reach them. I've done, I don't know, over 100 debates now with atheists and evolutionists, and I can't claim to have converted any of the opponents. But I know I get letters by the thousands from people in the crowd saying, wow, that's exactly what I needed. Thank you, that helped me. So that's the purpose for my answer. The only reason I would answer a fool or take time to answer a fool is because it'll help some others. I hope that helps. It is not a contradiction. All 
All right. No, thank you, Pastor. Uh, thank you, Pastor Hoven. You say you haven't converted any. I just uh, would uh, quickly uh, say that you almost came close. This call is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. I think with a gentleman by the name of Dr. Ben Wagner. I mean, he looked really convicted in one of your debates. But uh, um, all right, Pastor Hoven. The next question uh, is uh, regarding three different verses, and maybe you can elaborate. It has to do with the verse that says, uh, sell your clothes and buy a sword. And I'm told at that particular point in time, it was illegal for the Jews to own a sword. So basically, uh, some people say that Jesus was telling the Jews to go ahead and buy a weapon of the day, even sell your clothes to get one. And that was, it was illegal to own a sword. The, the second thing that I've heard regarding uh, the Bible verse that says, turn the other cheek, I've heard people say, well, yes, it does say turn the other cheek um, if someone smites you on one side of the face, but it doesn't say what to do after that, right? If, if they continue to pummel you, uh, the Bible doesn't give you any instructions to continue to lay there and be pummeled. Uh, and then the third um, verse, it says, those who live by the sword die by the sword. I've heard the response, well, yes, that's true. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Uh, but I've heard someone respond back to that. Well, it doesn't say it's a bad thing. It just says that is a consequence, that if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. But it doesn't, it doesn't say that it's a bad thing necessarily uh, to live by the sword in the, in the prospect of uh, like defending yourself or your family or, or your property. Uh, any, any comments or elaboration on those three? Uh, sell your clothes by a sword, turn the other cheek, uh, live by the sword, die by the sword? W is silent unless you're in Texas. It's a sword. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, in, in Florida. <laughs> okay. Secondly, uh, yes. Um, as far as sell your clothes and buy a sword, uh, was that illegal at the time? It certainly, as, as I understand it, it was it was illegal for the Jews to possess a weapon like that. But yet, when Jesus was going to the Garden of Gethsemane before the crucifixion, he said, uh, "Who have any swords here?" And Peter said, "We got two. He said, "That's enough." So either it wasn't illegal and they simply had them, or Jesus and his disciples were simply violating that law. I don't know the answer to that. I can't, I can't do it. No, somebody, some Jewish historian or scholar, maybe would have an answer to that. I don't know. Interesting question. They certainly had two, and Peter cut off the guy's ear. If you compare the four Gospels, uh, one of them says he cut off the servant's ear, the other one says he cut off his left ear, and another guy says it was, this guy's name was Malchus. So com combining the three uh, Gospels, three of the Gospels, you can get all the details, which is probably why God had the Gospels written for, by four different people. You have to blend them together, but that's another story. As far as was it illegal, I don't know. I think in every culture in the last uh, several hundred years, maybe several thousand years, when they want to control the population, they first control the weapons. That's what happened in Armenia, in uh, uh, eastern Turkey in 1914. They outlawed, uh, they, they had gun control, took all the guns away, and then they slaughtered the Armenian Christians, like over one and a half million of them in Armenia. My roommate in college, Mike Chanlon, was Armenian, I believe. His ancestors came from there because of that, came to America. You can check with Mike on that. Anyway, the, it's, it's, that's the situation. Dictators always do that control the guns. That's what's happening in America, gun control. And that's the whole purpose of this, is to prepare for the future when they want to, you know, uh, get people to, under their thumb with the New World Order, which is probably why they hate me, because I simply point, I point that out. Hey, guys, they're getting ready to put you in prison or enslave you or kill you. So, so I, I don't know uh, what, what is meant by that. Uh, was it illegal? Good question. Don't know. Secondly, turn the other cheek. You're right. It does not say what happens after. And you only got two cheeks. And after that, it looks like it's your choice. So if you want to explain it to them, uh, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, third question, uh, live by the sword, die by the sword. You're right, it does not say it's a bad thing. Uh, it just points out that if you get involved in that, you may die that way. But sometimes it's better to die fighting than to live in slavery. Uh, that was the thing that uh, Winston Churchill said when the Germans had taken over all of Europe. And they asked England, do you want to surrender? No. And he, late, years later, gave a famous speech at a, uh, at a college someplace in England. They asked him to come speak. He was an old man. He hobbled up to the platform very slowly, and he took a microphone, and all he said was, never, ever, 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 ever give up. <laughs> he turned around and walked back to his seat. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Students were stunned. Like, <laughs> this was the shortest speech ever. And like, wow, what a powerful... <laughs> it's like the general that said, 
But Hitler said, you want to surrender? And he wrote back one word, nuts. Nuts. And Patton said, anybody that eloquent deserves to be rescued. Let's go get that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the eloquent way to say it. Never, never, never give up. Amen. Amen. All right, you got more questions, brother? I'll be glad to call if you got more. Yes, sir, we got more, sir. Okay, I'll call right back. Okay, God bless you. You can use that uh, image for this video of the frog in the mouth. Oh, yes. Amen, amen. Praise God for Pastor Hoven and the example he sets for us. That's my favorite audio. Amen. <laughs>